God is good. Hey, y'all sound so good. Y'all don't, don't seem ready, man. Y'all don't seem ready. Let's try this one more time. God is good. And all the time. You know what? I could hear this side, but I can't hear this side, all right? So there's something going on. If I'm only hearing this side, but I'm not hearing this side, then we're not at church this evening. So can we try this? I need to make sure this side top our young bloods, all right? Let's try this one more time, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm testing this out, testing this out. God is good? All the time. And all the time? All right, all right. What's happening, Columbus? I think tonight is our ninth or eighth night. I keep forgetting, but I know that it has been the greatest youth revival ever. But this evening, I got a word, y'all. I got a word. I, I, I'm excited to preach this word this evening. So make sure none of you all miss this word. So what's our theme, everybody? The struggle is what? Real. The struggle is what? Why can I only hear this side, but this side is not with me? So let's, let's try this one more time. The struggle is what? Real. The struggle is what? Real. The struggle is real, because I know ain't none of us in here have had the easiest life. But thank God that though we have a struggle, there's a God still with us. So this evening, I got a word. So I think I started off talking about baptism on Tuesday. And then we talked about once you go through immersion, that is the outward manifestation of showing that you're committing to Jesus Christ. And then the next night after that, I talked about what it means to have a new life in Jesus Christ. Now, this evening, some of you are wondering, well, preacher, you talked about when I go through the waters, I'm going to have a new life. I'm going to have self-control. I'm going to have goodness, kindness. But pastor or preacher, can I say this? Though I'm going to have a new life in Christ, how can I make sure I maintain a consistent walk with Jesus Christ from now until Jesus Christ returns? Preacher, how can I make sure that I stay focused unto you? So this evening, I got the secret, and I'm so glad that Jesus has revealed it to me so I can share the secret with you all. Because this evening, my message is entitled, Keep Fighting. What does it say, everybody? Keep what? Fight. Keep what? Fight. Keep fighting. Because I want to understand that though you're going to be baptized on Saturday, though even if you've done it for, uh, before or you're going to do it for the first time, understand that the Christian walk is never easy. You see, let me tell you this. When I got baptized in 2008, my friends and I, my brother and my close friends, when we got baptized, we realized that the struggle even became much more real after I got baptized because I realized that temptations seem to come around you when God is on your side. Temptation seems to creep into your life. So this evening, once again, I want to understand that though the struggle is going to be real after you get baptized, there is still a Jesus Christ who will help you maintain your walk in him. Amen? So this evening, keep fighting. Can, can, I, can I begin the word this evening? I'm going to begin the word with my man Stephen Curry, right? Stephen Curry. Who's a fan of Stephen Curry? Stephen Curry? Man, all right, everybody here for LeBron. LeBron losing, though, but it's all good, though. Stephen Curry. Everybody check this out. You don't want to miss this. Stephen Curry, 2009, Stephen Curry was drafted by the Golden State Warriors. Everybody understand this, because this is what's going to make sense. In 2009, now everybody knows in basketball, in order for you to play in basketball, you have to be what we call drafted into the league. That means that they have to select you in order for you to play in the league. Now, everybody understand what's going on here. Stephen Curry was drafted by the Warriors, but I'm going to read to you his draft report. This is what people said about Stephen Curry in 2009. They said that Stephen Curry cannot lead a basketball team. They said that Stephen Curry does not have the handle. Stephen Curry is too small. Stephen Curry is not the person you should select to build your team around. I want you to understand that though the draft report was not favorable to Stephen Curry, I want you to understand that when it came down for him entering into the league six years later, Stephen Curry would go against what the draft report said. The draft report said he had no handle. The draft report said he couldn't lead a team. But what I saw from Steph Curry six years later was that Steph 
Stephen Curry, though they doubted him, though people believed that he would not become a great player, Stephen Curry, six years later, will win the NBA championship. Stephen Curry would become the best player in the league. This was a man who they said that he would not amount to anything great. He would not become the greatest player. But Stephen Curry, six years later, will become the league MVP, will take his team to the championship. And I want you to understand this evening, once you enter into the game, once you become baptized, understand that there's going to be some doubts in your life. You're going to doubt what Jesus can do for you. You're going to see the struggles that are around you. But understand that though there's going to be struggles once you become baptized, remember that you can rewrite what people will say about you. You can rewrite the struggles that will come in your life. Because maintaining a walk in Jesus Christ, key point this evening is this, to maintain a Christian walk with Christ, you must remain focused. Amen? Because Stephen Curry defined all reports. He came in there and there were certain things Steph Curry did. Though they said that he wouldn't amount to much, there were certain things Steph Curry had to do to make sure that he maintains a high level and go beyond people's measures. And this evening, the text that I want us to highlight or the text that's going to give us the key reasons as to why you should maintain your walk in Jesus Christ is this right here. Everybody, do not miss the greatest text that Paul gives us in Scripture. This right here is the secret you need in maintaining a Christian walk. This is the secret right here. After you become baptized, this is going to help you maintain your walk in Jesus. First Corinthians 9, verse 25 to 27. I'm going to take this home this evening. So everybody, make sure you see what's going on in this text. I'm going to highlight about five different movements that this text gives us. Everybody, let's begin. First Corinthians 9, verse 25 says, Everyone, everyone, everybody who's in here who competes in the games goes into strict training. Mm. They go into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. 26, it says, Therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Verse 27 says, No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. Understand what's going on in this text. Paul is saying everyone competes in the games. But though you compete in the games, you can't compete any kind of way. You can't compete anyhow. Everyone who competes in the games must go into strict training. You see, Paul was a fan of the Olympic games. Paul loved the runners and the various things that used to go on in Athens. So Paul was a a spectator of the Olympic sports. So he uses that analogy to provide to us how you maintain a Christian walk. Because I will tell you this, after you get baptized, the struggle is going to become so real. You are going to fall off so hard. But if you understand what this text is saying this evening, you are going to figure out that you can maintain in your walk with Jesus Christ. And let me hit you up with the first lesson that I see in this. You see, everyone who competes in the games go to strict training. Can I get to Point number one. Point number one is this. You maintain in your Christian walk by being a dedicated student to the rigorous training that comes with Christ's discipleship. Mm, What does that mean? Everybody, let me help you all understand that. Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers ever to box, said this quote, and I want to read this aloud this evening. It says, I hated every single Minute of training. This is Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer to ever box. I hated every single minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. Muhammad Ali's words is prophetic tonight. Because when I said that, you must maintain in your Christian walk by being a dedicated student to the rigorous training that comes with Christ's discipleship. This evening, in order to make sure that you maintain and have a new life with Jesus Christ, you must go through the rigorous 
training of life. You must go through the rigorous training of Christ's discipleship. In order to maintain that walk, Muhammad Ali's quote rings very clear this evening. You're going to hate your life as a Christian. You're going to hate it. Being a Christian is not easy. I, I can tell you from experience, it is definitely sorely hard. After you go into the water, there's going to be a struggle that you're going to see, why is God doing this to me? But in order to get through that struggle, in order to maintain that life with Jesus, Muhammad Ali's quote rings clear tonight. You must be a trained student in Jesus Christ. And some of you are asking, how do I become a trained student in Jesus Christ? You become a trained student in Jesus Christ by dedicating yourself to his word. You see, the problem is, is that some of us, after we get baptized, will forget the Christ that led us to our conversion. After we get baptized, some of us will forget that in order to make sure that we have a steady hand, the only way we're going to get through is by Jesus Christ. That is why this evening I'm saying that in order for you to maintain a Christian walk, you must be dedicated to the rigorous training of dedicating yourselves to his word. And obviously a lot of you are going to come to church. You're going to come to church. You're going to see church as a high. But in order to maintain your Christian walk, you cannot just listen to what the preacher says. But you got to study the word for yourself. You see, what happens here is this. The reason why a lot of us fall off, right? A lot of you were probably born into this church and fell off. That's how we have a lot of Ghanaian churches in our community. A lot of them, you find that they were seven-day Adventists before. And I'll tell you why. They forgot the God that brought them to where they are. They did not rely on the power of Jesus Christ. They did not dedicate themselves to the word. Prayer was not their first resort. Speaking to God was not their first resort. In order for you, after you go through that water, even when that person hits you up to do things that you used to do in your past life, if you have that rigorous training, if you're a student of Jesus Christ, what will happen here is that you will become a true disciple and you'll be able to maintain a life after you are baptized. Some of you are still not convinced. So let, let me hit you with the next point. It says that everyone goes into the games and they must go through what we call strict training. So I understood in the first point that I illustrated this evening that in order for you to be a rigorous disciple, you must train yourself, be invested into the word, be invested into your devotion, be invested into your prayer life. But there's something else that I see when the text says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Can I alert you to what that means this evening? Consistency is the prime factor in maintaining your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm, what does that mean? The great strong Jay-Z Carter said this, excellence is performing at a high level consistently. You see, one thing you have to realize in your Christian life, in order for you to still have your eyes focused on Jesus after you become baptized, is having consistency in your life. What does that mean? Can I help you all illustrate that? You see, I go to the barbershop almost every single week, right? I'm just one of those brothers. I need to make sure my hairline is fresh. If my hairline is not fresh, the girl is not looking at me. The same with female. If your eyebrows is not done right, it is a problem. So everybody, understand what's going on here. I ain't lying, though, right? I ain't lying. Ladies, I ain't lying. I eyebrows got to be on point. But understand what's going on here. You see, I have one barber that I go to all the time. I've been to this barber for years. He has been cutting my hair for years. But understand this. The worst thing a man can ever do is cheat on their barber. You see, what happens here, let's, let's look at the two pictures real quick. You see, we see one with a clean hairline, clean. The, the dimensions, the, the, the pixels, whatever, it's clean. Then we look at the other person, his hairline's a little bit jacked up. Now, how does a hairline become jacked up? You see, if you are cheating on your barber or you decide to switch up your barber for some odd reason, your hairline that always turns out fresh cannot go in the same way that you originally had it. Because in order for you to always have that 
fresh hairline that you're used to, you have to go to a consistent barber. Your barber has to consistently cut your hair. If your barber, if you ever cheat or switch up on your barber, you are prone to getting your hairline jacked up. I want you to understand this evening, in order to maintain a consistency with Jesus Christ, you cannot be cheating or flip-flopping on Jesus. To maintain in your Christian walk is to stay consistent with Jesus Christ. What, what happens here? You see, a lot of us, this, this is our prime problem. We follow Christ not consistently. What, what does that mean? This is how we treat Christ. As young people and as people of the church, sometimes we forget that Christ is the only thing in our life that could help us redeem from our sins. Sometimes we forget that avoiding or taking our eyes off Jesus Christ can lead to repercussions. But can I say what the theme or the hymn writer says? I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now my Savior. I need thee this evening in order to be consistent with Jesus Christ. You got to realize that you cannot switch and flip-flop, but understand that to maintain your walk, consistency must be your prime factor. After you get baptized, there are certain things you need to cut from your life. There are certain friends that in your past life cannot move with you towards your new life. You have to understand that certain behaviors that you had in your past life cannot move with you in your future life. The mistake that we always make here as young people and as people of the church is that we take our past influences and bring them towards our new life. But in order for you to have a maintained walk with Jesus Christ, consistency is the key. You have to realize that what comes with Jesus is putting the past behind and looking towards the future. That is why I say this. Consistency is the prime factor in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me get to point number three. There's something else the text says. The text says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Once you become baptized, it's a game. There's certain diets you need to keep. There are certain lifestyles you need to keep. But I love what else it says in the text. It says, they do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. What does that mean? In the Christian walk, or in our walk with Jesus Christ, there is a greater crown as to why you are getting baptized. You're not getting baptized just to say, look, God, I got baptized, I fulfilled scripture, so I'm good to go. You're not getting baptized to get some award or a certificate on Saturday morning. But you are getting baptized because there is something greater you're looking to obtain. And let me get to point number three this evening. A journey with Christ gets you to a destination where your walk on this earth will never get you to. You all see that? A journey with Christ gets you to a destination where your walk on this earth will never, ever get you to. Because when Paul wrote this text, Paul was seeing that after the Olympic Games are done, all the people do is get an award, a bronze medal, a gold medal, or a silver medal. But he understood that those medals will end up fading and tarnishing away. But he understood with that same kind of analogy, once you become a new person in Christ, once you go into the waters down with Christ, the achievement or the destination you get will never fade, will never tarnish, will never get old. That destination is where you and I need to go. Your destination is where you need to get to this evening. Let me, let me help you all understand that. See, back in the day, I'm, I'm still young, but I always say back in the day. Back in the day, 
I competed in what we call Bible Bowl. Anybody ever did Bible Bowl? Anybody ever did Bible Bowl? All right, all right, Columbus in the house, cool. So we competed in what we call the National Bible Bowl competition. The team, the team that you see is behind us. So in order for us to bring glory back to our church in Queens, New York, to make sure that we win this Bible Bowl, there was a certain kind of training we needed to get to. Now, we were doing this kind of training because we wanted to get a prize, which was our destination. So what we would do is that every Sunday, we would always get together. We would practice the questions. We would look over the scripture. We would do our individual studying of the text and the passages that were given to us from this Bible Bowl tournament. 2009, we would go to the Nationals in Atlanta. We would win our New York region. We would hit it all. We were the top team. We will get to Atlanta for the national championships. We play, we facing against various churches in various conferences. Understood this? That moment in our championship run, this was our goal. Our goal was this. We want to get the prize. We want to get the medal. We want to get the glory. By God's grace, 2009, our Queens team did not come in third place. We did not come in second place. But God's grace, our Queens team hit and won the championship in Atlanta. And we won it because of this. Our aim was to get the crown. Our aim was to get the trophy. This evening, if you are going to have a new life and maintain in your new life with Jesus Christ, the picture is clear. Understand the destination. Your journey on this earth will not get you to the destination where Christ already is. Your only journey that ever matters is your journey with Jesus Christ. And that is how you maintain your walk and your newness in Jesus. Because in order to maintain it, you got to realize that the destination is heaven. The destination is a place where there will be no more sickness. A destination where there will be no more pain. A destination where there will be no more death. A destination where you can chill and love the animals and your brothers for the rest of your life with no harm. This evening, my question is this. Are you going to maintain in your Christian walk because you want to get to that prize which is not on this earth but this prize where my Jesus Christ lives and this evening that place is heaven. This evening after you go into the water after you gain these fruits that I talked about yesterday the next destination is maintaining in that new walk with Jesus. In order to maintain, your motivation is this. You want to get to the destination where Jesus Christ already resides, and that place is called heaven. But there's something else in the text that I see. It says, everyone who competes goes into strict training. They do it for a crown that will not last, but we do it for a crown that lasts forever. But can I tell you what it says in verse 27? It says this, Therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer be in the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. What does that mean? The, Paul, Paul looks at what the Olympians do for life. He looks at how they compete. But he understands this. Therefore, since I'm not just achieving a crown that will tarnish and get old, I want to make sure that I'm not running all over for my crown. I want to make sure that I am running with a certain kind of aim. So in order for me to run with a certain kind of aim, he says this, I cannot be like a boxer who is beating the air but hitting nobody. I cannot be like a person who does not have any kind of aim in their life. But the text says it very clear, I must make my body a slave so that I can obtain the prize. Let me get to my fourth point this evening. Have Having a relationship with Christ only occurs if you keep Christ in your rare view mirror. What does that mean? What does that mean? He says that I do not run aimlessly. 
I need to make my body, I need to make it a slave so that I stay focused and maintaining my walk with Jesus Christ. You see, I understand this from the text. Having a relationship with Christ only occurs if you keep Christ in your rear view mirror. Some of you are still looking at me confused, so let me help you all illustrate that. You see, I just got me a brand new car. 25 years, I finally got me a car, right? Understand what's going on here. Now, I love my brand new car. My brand new car, I, got, I don't got a, be- a Beamer, I don't got a Mercedes, but, you know, I got me an Elantra. But check this and understand this. Now, ever since I got this car, I treat it like my idol, man. I, I make sure it's clean. I make sure it smells good. I make sure everything is right about this car. But understand what happens here. I said that having a relationship, you got to keep Christ in your rear view mirror. So understand this. Because I want this car to be in the most perfect condition, I do not drive this car anyhow. I do not switch lanes anyhow. I do not park this car anyhow. If I'm going to park anywhere, I'm using my rear view mirror. I'm not using my own kind of judgment. I'm using my rear view mirror. Before I make a turn, I'm using my rear view mirror. Make sure no one's behind me, no one's in front of me. Because I want to make sure that this car stays just like how it looks in this image. And it comes the same way with Jesus Christ. Having a relationship with Christ only occurs if you keep Christ in your rare view mirror. Amen? Today, some of us are going to get baptized on Saturday. You're going to have a new life. You're going to have the fruits of the Spirit, as I talked about yesterday. But this is the biggest thing here I want you to understand. In maintaining a walk with Jesus, you can't lose sight of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ always has to be in your rare view mirror. You see, sometimes we think that we can get our fix from the church. But can I I make a, 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 a highlight this evening? Can I say this about the church? A lot of people are expecting answers and solutions. But people forget that church, everybody hear this, church is a hospital and not a museum. Mm. Church is not a place where you're going to find perfect people. Matter of fact, if you want to go to a perfect church, you are the one who is going to ruin that church. Because you got to understand when it comes to church, church is a hospital and not a museum. You're not coming to a place with perfect people, with people who got it all together, but you're coming to a place where people got problems and issues. But I understand that even though if I come to a place where I'm going to fall off in my walk with Jesus, Christ, in order for me to keep maintaining my relationship, I can't have my church in my rear view mirror. What I need to have in my rear view mirror is Jesus Christ. This evening, understand that it's going to be hard. You're going to get baptized on Saturday. Someone's going to hit you up to get back to your past life. But once you have Christ in your rear view mirror, not your church, not your mother, not your father, but once you have Christ in your rear view mirror, you're not going to get into accidents where God cannot take you out of. This evening, key thing is this. Key thing number four. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ will only occur if you keep Jesus Christ in your rear view mirror. Can I, can I get to my fifth point this evening? My fifth point this evening is this. You maintain your relationship with Christ by using your testimony to draw others unto Jesus Christ. Let, let me help you illustrate that. You see, the text says this. After I make and I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, this text says it finishes off with this perfectly clear. I make myself a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. The the greatest disappointment will be disqualification into Jesus' kingdom. That's the greatest misery. 
You see, what happens here, and what I want to alert to us this evening is this clearly and simply. Once you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, once you have a new life in him, it comes down to maintaining that new life. But in order to also maintain it, your testimony of how God brought you to where you are at today, the way that God has delivered you ought to be your testimony in order to make you maintain the relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm giving you all points in maintaining your relationship because understanding here is this. Point number five says that your testimony ought to be a reason as to why you maintain a relationship with Jesus. After you get baptized, after you get a new life, maintaining a walk with Jesus Christ all focuses on this. How are you going to use your conversion to lead others to come onto Christ? See, the work is not, it's not finished after you get baptized. The work is not done. Because Paul is saying in, in this key thing, the reason why I still kept going in my walk with Jesus, because Paul himself did not keep the word to himself, but he used what God did through him as a testimony to preach unto others. Let me help you all illustrate that. You see, my best friend lives in Cali, and I told you all I was in Cali last week for a program, doing a revival like I'm doing here. And my friend and I, we both attended Walla Walla University. Now, during my time in Walla Walla, my friend did not have that relationship that he ought to have with Jesus Christ. But through my influence and my friendship with my friend, he would gain a new conversion in Jesus Christ. Now, I want to alert to you what my friend did that you all need to be doing this evening. In order to maintain his walk with Jesus Christ, he used his testimony as a way to also draw others unto Jesus Christ. Some of you ought to realize that in order to maintain a relationship with Jesus Christ and to keep grounded in Jesus, your testimony of your conversion on Saturday morning better be used in preaching it unto others. Because this evening, Paul makes it clear. We're all going to compete in these games. The question is this. Are you going to make sure that you do not get disqualified? That's the question this evening. The question is, are you going to run in such a way that you are not going to be disqualified yourself. I understood from the time I got baptized that if I'm going to maintain in Jesus Christ, my testimony needs to be used to preach unto others. I need to realize I need to go to rigorous training in Christ's discipleship. I need to understand that I need to keep Christ in my rearview mirror. This evening, once you go into the waters on Saturday, after you go through the process and immersion and come up, your influences are still going to be there. Don't, don't get it twisted like they're still not going to be there. But as I've said in this revival, you can rewrite your ending. Because Paul makes it clear that I run not aimlessly, but I make my body a slave so that after I have preached unto others, I myself are not disqualified from the prize. This evening, the game happens on Saturday when you go into the water. Whether you've done it before or you're going to do it again, it happens on Saturday. My question is this. If you're going to maintain in your baptism, if you're going to make sure you live a life straight with Jesus, make sure as the text says, you will not be disqualified because you have made your body a slave. You have not run aimlessly and you have gone through the rigorous training of Christ's discipleship. My appeal is simple this evening as the praise team comes on up. That my appeal is simple this evening. As we get into the final hours and the final days of the revival, I'm calling unto each and every one of you that today you understand what it means to maintain in your new walk. 
You understand the secret in maintaining a new walk with Jesus. Are you going to give your life to Jesus Christ? As the praise team comes on up and we sing, come on home. This is what I want you to ponder on this evening. This is what I want you to reflect on this evening. Are you going to compete and go through the rigorous training of life? As the praise team sings, meditate upon this as I make my appeal this evening. My appeal is simple this evening. Are you going to come on home to Jesus Christ? As they sing it one more time, as we're standing up, my appeal is this. You've heard the messages throughout this week. You've understood that the struggle is real. But today you've understood that Christ is going to give me ways to maintain in his discipleship. As they sing the song, ponder on the message and make this your calling. are closed as all eyes are closed this evening as all eyes are closed and the place is silent as we meditate on the message this evening as we get ready for baptism I know that there's hearts this evening that have heard the messages this week and want to give their life to Jesus I'm calling you wherever you are to come to the front calling you wherever you are today you have said that I want this Jesus Christ. I want to maintain in Jesus and this evening I found the secret because today I'm going to compete in the games through strict training. I'm going to go through the games not running aimlessly but I'm going to make my body a slave so that I may not be disqualified from the prize. This evening wherever you are I'm calling you to come forward. Wherever you are I'm calling you to come forward. It's all eyes are closed. No one can see you. I'm calling on to you. Come on home this evening. Come on home. You've been to the waters before, but you didn't find ways to maintain in Jesus Christ. I'm calling you wherever you are to come forward. You want to make the commitment for the first time. I'm calling you wherever you are to come forward. All eyes are closed. No one can see you. As we're about to get into our final word of prayer, wherever you are, Jesus is calling you to come on home. I'm calling you this evening to give your life to Jesus through baptism. Wherever you are, don't look to your neighbor, but you're making this because you understand what Jesus can do. Jesus will help you maintain in him after you go through the waters. Wherever you are, come on home. Come on home. so that we can pray for you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister, coming up. I know there's more out there. Heard the messages throughout this revival and want to give that commitment because they understand that Christ will help them maintain in their walk. Come on on. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Wherever you are, you came here for the first night, but you understood what Jesus can do and help you maintain in him. Come on home, wherever you are. God bless you, my sister. God bless those of you who have come. I know there are people who are still wrestling with the decision. I've been to the waters before, but I've fallen off. I'm calling you to come on home. Come on home. As the praise team keeps singing, I'm calling you to come on home. Join my brothers and sisters who have come up here. As all eyes are closed and as we give a word of prayer this evening, for any of you still out there, still want to come on home, come on to the front so we can pray for you. God bless my brothers and sisters that have made 
the greatest decision ever. I pray that, Lord, may they understand through baptism and through a new life comes with strict training. A training that will make sure they will not dis disqualify from the prize. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank our brothers and sisters who have come to the front this evening. Lord, they have heard the message. They understand why they need to make that outward manifestation of baptism. They have understood why, what happens when you get that new life in Christ. And they have understood this evening how to maintain in their new walk with Jesus. This evening, I pray that, Lord, may you be with them and be with those who are still wrestling with the decision. Lord, take us home. Lord, take us home. Amen.